Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I am here today to talk about Xbox and maybe more specifically Microsoft and Bethesda and how they're teaming up together. Of course Microsoft bought Bethesda and what I'm really wanting to talk about is how is that going to affect us and when I say us, I am of course talking about PlayStation Virtual Reality users. And you know, I think it would be fair to say that if you were a PSVR fan, PSVR user, or even PlayStation user in general, a lot of this stuff should concern you. First of all, if you're just a normal PlayStation gamer, only on PS4, PS5, whatever, 100% this is going to have a negative impact on you. But for Virtual Reality, for PSVR, not exactly as clear cut as that, although I would still imagine it is ominous at best. So why should we care as PSVR gamers, or not even just PSVR gamers, virtual reality gamers in general? That is because Bethesda are one of the few AAA publishers slash developers out there who are willing to put the time and the effort into driving virtual reality forward. It seems very clear to me that Bethesda or somewhere, someone in Bethesda, one of the higher ups, they believe in virtual reality. Uh, they want to see it succeed and they want to push their games on virtual reality. And we've seen this with Skyrim virtual reality, we've seen it with Fallout. We've seen it with Wolfenstein Cyberpilots. We were about to see it again with Doom 3 Special Edition. We've seen it already with Doom Virtual Reality or VF4, sorry. So Bethesda, even though a lot of the games I'm just after mentioning have had very mixed results when it comes to Virtual Reality, a lot of that stuff has just been ported. So for example, while Skyrim was excellent, I love Skyrim Virtual Reality, it wasn't built for the ground up to include all these virtual reality, you know, motion control, interactions, whatever. It kind of feels just like a port, a straight up port. Obviously they added the motion control combat, so I guess you could give them credit there. And certainly I would, especially for the archery and stuff like that, it feels very natural. But then, you know, a game like Fallout, even though it never came to us, even on PC, it has some like mixed results there. I mean, I'm not sure if it ran very well, even for the high-end PCs, those blurriness issues and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you've had Wolfenstein Cyberpilot, which is, you know, meh. But I will say I am excited once again for Doom 3 VR Edition, which is coming out at the end of the month, of course. Uh, that looks excellent, even though it's a dazed game, it's been out for a long, long time. Just the fact that it's going to be like, it has a horror element to it, that's right up my alley. So yeah, Bethesda has shown interest in virtual reality, is my point. They seem to be believers in it, and I'm always excited for Bethesda E3s, because there's always the chance that they will surprise us, and throw us virtual reality gamers a bone, when so many other AAA developers just will not. So, what has changed? Why has this got me concerned? Well... The big reason is that Microsoft have bought them. So if Microsoft bought them, that means that Phil Spencer is now in charge of all these Bethesda studios. And if you've been paying attention to virtual reality in the past, you may know that Phil Spencer is not the biggest believer in virtual reality. He's been openly kind of doubtful of virtual reality. He seems to think that it's not ready. Yes, especially not for consoles. It's not ready for the sitting room. Project Scorpio, which Blazer came on to be known as the Xbox One X, was supposed to have virtual reality at launch, like that was one of the bullet points, that it was going to have high fidelity virtual reality support. Of course the console came out, and after it released, Phil Spencer came along and said, actually we're backtracking on that, we don't think virtual reality is ready yet, so you know, the Xbox last generation never got VR support, even though they advertised us, you know, they did a real 180 there for whatever reason I guess they were seeing that you know PSVR wasn't exactly setting the world on fire you know the rift the vibe you know they have their place they have their fans they have their niche but they weren't making big big money and Microsoft are all about big big money and I mean we can we can look up in articles interviews that Phil Spencer so even just typing in Google Phil Spencer VR you can see he's the headlines Forbes Xbox head Phil Spencer rules out VR for Xbox Series X, which is the one that just came out now. Down here he's saying nobody's asking for VR on Xbox. He believes in VR but says it's still not right for consoles. Phil Spencer hopes VR gets bigger but currently not part of their plan or whatever. I'm just, you know, I'm finishing these titles because it's uh, pretty easy to guess what he's about to say. Let's read this one. This is pretty new. 
February 2020, and he's talking about the Xbox Series X, which is the newest one. So speaking to the Gamertag Radio podcast, Spencer outlined Microsoft and Xbox in particular stance on VR, saying there are no plans for any sort of virtual reality supporting the next generation of Xbox consoles. We're not going to do that. I understand certain people want to do that, would want that, I should say, but we have to focus our efforts on things we're doing right now. And the most precious resource that we have is the team and their ability. And I just have to focus on the things we're doing right now. He expanded upon his comment about resources later in the video, suggesting Xbox would be unable to provide the same full VR experience as Sony on PSVR or Valve, blah, blah, blah. He says, VR is not as simple as plug in your headset. You have to redo the dash even though Sony never redid the dash. Like, there's a bunch of work that goes into it. And the teams at Valve, the teams at Sony, the teams at Oculus that, that are doing that work, they know the completeness and what it means to support the platform. Spencer somewhat fell foul of the VR community last November when he controversially stated that nobody is asking for VR, claiming it is isolating and goes against Xbox's idea of gaming being communal. There we go. This is the kind of stuff that is terrifying to see. This is the guy who now owns Bethesda. I mean, his company does, not his company, the company he works for does. But he's the guy making decisions when it comes to the gaming wing of Xbox. And he thinks it's isolating. He thinks it goes against Xbox's very core principles of being communal. Despite those previous comments, Spencer wasn't entirely down on VR. Oh, isn't that nice? In this latest interview, he name drops Sony's upcoming Iron Man VR and states that he knows Pete people that are working on some good viewer titles, great viewer titles, and I'm not trying to not be supportive of that to use a double negative. So he's just trying to not shit in his friends who do believe in virtual reality. Okay, I mean, you get the you get the gist of that. What article was that? That was from Forbes. Forbes.com. I'll link that in the description if anyone wants to read that themselves, even though that's the end of the Phil Spencer piece, which is the important part for what we're worried about right now. I will keep in mind that that interview was from 2020, this time last year. It's not entirely clear to me whether this deal, this Bethesda deal, was in the works all the way back then. Could very well have been because this is such a huge, you know, business move. Maybe it takes a considerable amount of time to get all these gears into motion. So it is possible his thoughts will have evolved, hopefully, since then on virtual reality. It is also possible that the people within Bethesda who are now who have now been absorbed into Microsoft, into Xbox, maybe they'll be like, hey, you said you want to give us freedom to do what we want. Well, we want to do VR, uh, let us do VR. But even if that does happen, there's a good chance Phil will be like, okay, you can do virtual reality, but only on the Oculus, only on PC. You're not giving PlayStation any more game. And that is why I do strongly suspect that Doom 3 will be the last game that we get from Bethesda on PSVR in terms of, well, probably last game we get from Bethesda on PSVR, full stop. And that is sad, you know, there's so much potential there for future titles to go virtual reality. Probably gonna miss out on the Elder Scrolls 6 whenever that gets VR support. I mean, even if our hardware is good enough, even if we're playing that on the PS6, on the PSVR 3 or whatever, because of business reasons, we won't be able to get that. We'll have our own games, I'm sure, or whatever. But still, that'll be a painful one to miss. You know, same with Fallout 5, same with like future Doom games. And you know, they've got so many IPs by doing this. It's like a ridiculous amount of IPs. Prey, Prey were dabbling with virtual reality support. Fallout, as I've said, you know, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, all these games that could have had VR support, that could have had a great future on PSVR, but it looks like those dreams are coming to a close, and we just have to rely on other AAA publishers and developers, and hopefully Sony themselves, to give us that content instead, because it looks like we're going to be looking over at the other side of the fence and seeing these fantastic games and wishing we could have them. Now, the only possible saving grace for us PlayStation owners would be if Sony allowed Microsoft to put the Xbox Game Pass on PlayStation systems. That is highly unlikely to happen. They're in direct competition with one another. For Xbox Game Pass to come to PlayStation, it would mean exposing PlayStation users to the Xbox ecosystem in order to play these games, which Sony would, I mean, that you would imagine that's the last thing they would ever want. However, if it does get to a stage where Microsoft have bought so many of these huge studios 
I mean, they said they're not done yet. They might go for Rockstar next. They might go, well, Take Two, I guess. They might go for Capcom, you know, Konami titles or IPs or whatever. And then you're looking at a situation where people stop buying PlayStation consoles and then Sony are kind of maybe desperate and then they say, okay, fine, you can put Game Pass on uh, PlayStation. That is an unlikely future, but it is, I guess, possible. Something to probably think about in the future one day, maybe 10 years time, whatever. Everything's up in the air. You know, you cannot say for certain what's going to happen. For all we know, Xbox, Microsoft, Phil Spencer will say, okay, you can you can still have VR games, seen as VR is such a niche gaming market at the moment. Uh, we want to sell as many copies of our games as we can in virtual reality, so we will let PSVR have them. That's a possibility too. If that happened, I mean, we'd, pre we'd be pretty happy with that. Uh, but, you know, again, who knows? All speculation. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all of this. Uh, this is one. This is a big one. This is a big one. It'll be sad if we miss out on all these potential games or if all these potential games that would have happened are now no longer going to happen and we'll never ever even hear about them because Phil said no. No virtual reality. Get that shit out of here. Go make a fucking... Go put some more microtransactions in The Elder Scrolls 6. Alright, we don't have time for this. I don't know. Anyway, that is it for me waffling on and on about this topic. Let me know in the comments again what you think, and we can discuss it further there if you would like. But before I do end the video, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keep this channel going. In particular, let me give a shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters. Tradition, Chopped 517, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Columbus Thomas III, not Christopher Columbus Thomas III. That is a mistake I met before. Pete Hawkins and Crumb. Thank you very much for that support, lads. It is very much appreciated. If you'd like to help me out over on the Patreon, you can do so. The link for that will be in the description below. If not, you can help me out with the old like, subscribe, comments, whatever the usual YouTube shot. You know that by now. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music. His new album is coming out very, very soon. The 19th, I believe. And I'll be playing a track from that in the background as we speak. So look forward to that. That'll be coming out very soon. You want to find him, you can check him in the description as well. The link will be there. Let me end the video right there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Please stay moist.